Okay, so before we move on to the wrap up, do we have any questions? So moving on, um, again, let's just discuss some summary um, for fall two um, for teachers. You report the teacher of record and substitute should only be reported for vacant positions. So you only report a the seed of a sub teacher on a course if that class has a vacancy, meaning there are no contractual employed staff members assigned to that class. If the staff member assigned to that class is on leave, then report that staff member instead. Then um, all staff must have an SDM record submitted every year. So CalPAS is not intelligent enough to auto-populate one more year to your SDM record. And so make sure that when you upload your SDM for this current year, the staff service years is updated as well for both um, LEA staff service and total, L, total staff service years. Because this is key to determining if a staff is inexperienced or not. And then, of course, staff without seeds that should be reported may obtain seeds from the CTC with a certificate of clearance. So just go to, you know, just reach out to CTC and ask how to achieve, accomplish this. And then staff assignments are reported by school and job classification. So I've mentioned you can report a staff member at multiple sites and at multiple job classifications. Just make sure that they don't exceed a 200% FTE threshold. And of course, you assign them based on their credentials. You don't just assign a teacher at 12 or an 11 just because they're doing a certain function that is, you know, um, that mirrors that classification. They need to have credentials to be reported as an 11, 12, um, and 10, okay? And 26 and 27. Okay, and then of course you have student course section should be submitted for all students K and to 12 enrolled on census day. Okay, again, you only report SCSC for those K and to 12 students enrolled on census day. If a student left before census day, then do not submit an SCSC. Otherwise you'll get a cert five. If a student enrolled after census day, then um, do not submit an SCSC as well because you'll get a cert five as well. Now, um, EL students must be enrolled in at least one course section where the education service code is populated to show they are receiving services. Yes, that's key. Otherwise, if you don't report um, any EL service for any class at your site, then you know, um, you're asking for a lawsuit. <laughs> so make sure that you know, um, EL services are indicated in each of your courses. If you're not providing EL services, put a five, which is no EL service provided, okay? It doesn't matter if um, there is a student, EL student enrolled or not, make sure that uh, your classes are, are um, you know, you have indicated EL, um, an EL service code. And then PSTS data should only be for CT completers this year. So um, who, who graduated in 2019, 2020. So, and so for fall to submit PSTS data for um, high school completers in 2019, 2020, who are CT pathway completers. Now for end of year four, um, submit your um, student completers who were special ed during their completion year. Okay, and this is for end of year four. The PSTS for fall two comes from your SIS. The PSTS for end of year four will come from your SEDS. And then students may have more than one post-secondary outcome, meaning you can submit more than one record to CalPads. CalPads will accept it whether um, your SIS has the capability to, to create multiple records um, is you know, up to you. So if, if you are able, if they are able to create multiple records, then well and good. Now, if you want to report, if they are not able to, and you want to report more outcomes, then um, add those outcomes manually online in CalPads.
Yes, Marisa, uh, you say, did you say to report EL services for all sections regardless if... No, what I'm saying is you have to indicate an EL service code um, for, for for those classes because, you know, you never know if, um, let's say, you have a, um, a, a student who might be in a class, an EL student, and, and that's the only class that that student attended in. And you have, let's say, um, an EL sir, you didn't provide an EL service, then, um, you know, you have one that fell into the cracks. So make sure that you have codes populated for each of those classes. And then uh, here is just a process um, that normally occurs after you've certified fall two. So, of course, all of this fall two data goes to CDE who then uses it for um, assignment monitoring. So you have your CD educator course data here, which is which comes from CalPAS, and then you have your CT credentials. They then go into a data system, and then based on the information, they analyze the data, and then they create um, a list of questionable assignments, which then is sent to LEAs, which then you need to review and make corrections. If you have uh, questions on assignment monitoring, please contact your monitoring um, authority. So this could be your county office of ed for charter schools. This could be your district authorized district. Um, district, uh, what do you call this? Yeah, your authorized um, district. Um, that your, your charter school is assigned to, okay? And then once all of these are corrected, you then um, CTC collects the assignments and then displays it in public for everyone's consumption, okay? And then of course, if you don't, <laughs> this is just a joke that we guys, you know, to make it simple, if you don't, don't want to report any if you don't report any assignments, of course, you won't have any misassignments, right? Right? So, but then that's a wrong logic. Always make sure that you report the correct data regardless if it's a misassignment or not. Because, you know, you're, you're telling CDE that this is your real life scenario, real life setting on the ground. So you have misassignments, that's well and good. That's for your own benefit because you, and, and, all, uh, and at the end, a student's benefit because once you assign or, you know, equip a staff member with, you know, with better credentials, then students will benefit. So report whatever you need to report, regardless if it's misassignment or not, that's fine. We just need the data and we can help you down the road or at least CD can help you down the road in providing, you know, giving you guidance on enabling your staff um, to, to get those credentials, okay? And so this goes to our milestone, our milestone here. Um, of course, I, I know you're still worried about fall one, but, you know, it is my obligation for you guys, for, for me to warn you or, you know, give you a heads up on, on what to expect for fall two. So this is just some timelines that we have set for you guys to be able to, to know if you're on track or not. So bottom line is you should be certified by March 5, okay? And fall two does not have an amendment window. And so you should be done by March 5, unless of course there's a extension or, or not. Anyway, so these are your timelines. Make sure that, um, you know, you can just come back to this later on to see where you are at. And that should determine if you're on track or not. And then of course, once you um, click on that LA approve button, you're certified for a fall two. And you have a short window of rest between, you know, fall to an end of year, at least for in terms of CalPAS reporting. But then of course you still have your, you know, um, CASP. If there's a CASP this year, then of course you have to continuously update your CalPAS reporting to account for those students taking CASP. Okay. So 
that ends our session. Um, if you need help, um, our go-to um, way for you guys to contact us is the web. Please bookmark this. It's better to create a service ticket because it automatically populates um, you know, your information. It also um, allows us to link your issue to a defect if there's an act active defect out there. And then the second uh, preference is email. You can submit an email to CalPads um, and then we can transcribe it into, um, the system will transcribe it, but this is, it takes a little longer to for us to pick up that ticket. And then of course, phone. Uh, we won't be able to answer you live when you call up. You can always leave a message, but this takes longer to be addressed. And then listserv, um, we have two listservs, but the common one is a CCS listserv. This is a two-way listserv. So if we, you have issues um, relevant to um, your SIS, you can always re, um, post it on the listserv and someone using the same SIS might be able to help you. You know, if you have, um, if you need to ask for best practices out there, then you can always, um, um, you know, ask for help on the reserve. And we have a lot of LEAs, seasoned veterans, who is always um, helpful and, you know, uh, willing to share their knowledge and experience. Um, that way you don't have to go through the same fire that they've been through, you know, um, two, two, three years ago. So, and kudos to those that I see on the reserve who help out LEAs. You guys are you know, our hero as well. And then of course we have resources that you could go to. The first one is Bridge. Yeah. You know, you, you can go to Bridge to register for live sessions. However, the Bridge is only, Bridge page is only, um, uh, what do you call this? Accessible to, to um, two members of your LEA. So, um, you know, you can probably um, share it with your um, staff or not. However, um, we have our uh, YouTube channel. The same things that you see on Bridge will be um, will be recorded and published on the YouTube um, page. Please um, subscribe to our YouTube page. That way, um, you will be able to you will get notifications if new videos are uploaded to CalPES. And then you have your CalPES user manual. Bookmark that, bookmark the uh, CTC webpage. And then this is an old link, but I believe there are still some helpful stuff. This is from Brandy's initial um, training for assignment monitoring. She, she posted um, additional information there regarding assignment monitoring at the start of this last year. There might be additional uh, um, you know, data that she might have posted that you could probably look at. And then we go to feedback. You know, If you have questions, I'll answer them after this session. But um, what's important is for you guys to complete a survey. Marta has been asking us, hey, um, have you guys telling everyone to complete the survey? Because I need to see feedback. And so I'm telling you right now, it would uh, benefit us and benefit you as well to answer the survey. Uh, please complete the survey. You know, give us some feedback, some constructive feedback. It could be, you know, um, it, it doesn't have to always be accolades, which, you know, we would be happy to see that. But if you have additional information or that you want to share and for us to be able to improve our training, uh, please um, do that. Uh, please complete the survey so we can review our process. With that, um, I would like to thank you on behalf of my uh, the CC's training staff, me, Nate, Marshall, and Sly. Thank you very much for your time, for being patient. I think we're 10 minutes um, overboard, but, um, but hopefully you were able to get some information. I know you're still focusing on fall one, but um, you know you can always come back to the slides. You can download the PowerPoint presentation from the resource page and look at the CalPads user manual and the CCS YouTube video, okay?